foremost, I'm going to give credit to Alabama. They're just a great football team. Um, you know, I just I have to say a lot of bad signs early on here for Ohio State. Um, you know, missing some key players, and then when Trey Sermon broke his collarbone, I didn't have a good feeling. You know, there either. Um, I don't know if it was a broken collarbone, but I think that might have been it, Mark. Uh, you know, if he's going to the hospital, I don't know if that was your vibe, but. Uh, that I just think from a nuts and bolts X's and O's standpoint, it's not a good thing when any team loses their best running back. Uh, is that right. why Ohio State lost? Probably not. But no. is it a no. is it a reason why they lost and lost as decisively as they did? Of course, there's a reason that Trey Sermon is the number one back on the team. He just ripped up Northwestern, one of the best defenses in the country, for 331 yards. He just laid it on Clemson for a buck 75 or whatever it ended up to be. And uh, Trey Sermon's a tremendous back. Uh, he would have he would have done more damage than Master Teague. I don't think there's any question about that. He's a better back. He's proven to be a better back. Substantially better, not necessarily, but he would have gained more yardage. Maybe it keeps a drive or two alive. We don't know right. what the situation is there. So the Buckeyes certainly right out of the gate. Um, from an X's and O's standpoint, yes. Talent standpoint, yes, of course. Depth standpoint, yes. And also just the psyche morale of the team thinking, okay, well, uh, we we come into this game missing two of our defensive linemen, missing our place kicker. Now we've lost our starting running back who has been a force uh, in this season, in uh, particular the last three games. I think it, it probably weighed on the psyche of certain players and maybe the entire team. Yeah, it was uh, the, the you know the, the floodgate started to cave in. It, it, you know what, Justin Fields? We didn't see the best of Justin Fields. There was a moment, Mark, where I said in the second quarter, I don't know if you remember this play. It was twenty-one to fourteen, and he missed Garrett Wilson in the end zone on a pass that he would have hit against Clemson, but he didn't hit tonight. And that just said to me, if he's not hitting those throws tonight, we ain't got no hope. So. Uh, that was also a bad sign too, and then you know, then the roof just caved in from there. Um, and you know, I obviously I think they were going to have to score a lot of points to have a chance tonight. Um, and you know, you obviously saw the secondary exposed. My only hope, as I told you before, was that they would get a little bit better of a pass rush. Um, you know, obviously not having some defensive linemen, but that may have helped a little bit too. But I, I mean, even a completely healthy team, maybe it's a, a semi-competitive game. But I still think they lose the game tonight. But, you know, maybe they just make a little bit better showing than they did. Certainly couldn't have hurt. Um, just overall, that's my thoughts. Uh, obviously, you're playing an all-time great team. You better be healthy at every position and have your best players to have a chance. So, um, but they're a great team. And, you know, obviously, they won the game. And uh, I don't know what your, your thoughts on all of that are. But uh, if you want to sum it up, what do you, what do you think? I sum it up by saying that Alabama's uh, on its own plane for this year. Uh, and Ohio State is probably the second best team in the country. They showed that last week uh, where they probably played over their heads slightly. Or it's actually impossible to play over your heads. You cannot play beyond your potential. They maxed out their potential. They, they came close to maxing out their potential. They played extremely well as a team. Uh, and, and maybe they didn't give an A effort tonight. Um, you know, some things go unrecognized uh, in addition to Trey Sermon, Tommy Togi. You know, Wyatt Davis was lost at some point in the yeah. second quarter. I forget yeah. exactly when that was. You lose your best offensive lineman, that doesn't help. Can we measure that? Of course, we can't measure that. Uh, they lost to Bonte right. Smith at some point in the third quarter. Uh, they were certainly right. in control at that sure. point, but uh, they could have scored more points and done more um, at that juncture of the game. So, um, yeah, I, I will have thoughts as we go through this. But, uh, yeah, I, I did not think that Sean Wade had a good game. I thought yeah. that Justin Fields played another gutsy performance, and I think uh, considering the circumstances, he played well. Was he hot? Was he on – in the flow, in the zone like he was? No, he wasn't in the zone, right. in the flow like he was against Clemson, but I thought he played reasonably well. I don't remember 
you know, you pointed out one missed throw. He missed a couple other ones, but I thought most of his passes that were off target were because of pressure and just receivers being locked up and, and defended. So I didn't think that he played. I thought that he worked a lot of balls in there that uh, he showed superior arm strength under duress to get him in there and throw the ball across the field and all over the place. Uh, I, I thought uh, Justin Fields did only but raise his stock and value for the NFL draft for his legacy as a collegiate player, as a great all-time player in a limited period of time, but uh, just a tremendous player, Justin Fields. Well, I, I thought Mark did. Uh, the reason I mentioned the missed touchdown is just the margin of error. I can say, and I'm saying this because Alabama is such a great team. The margin for error, you have to make those plays. It, it, it's basically what I'm saying is for him to, to have a chance to play, to beat a great team, you have to play that great to win. That's why I was going, kind of going with that. Sure. Uh, and I think I think he had a good average to good game in my opinion I thought they would utilize his legs more they only utilize his legs a little bit uh, obviously not having the balance killed them too uh, certainly expected more than 24 points tonight but I'm gonna I mean I would give credit to Alabama's defense but uh, I, I think Ohio State missed a couple of opportunities but yeah I, I think you know at the end of the day you know, even a perfect performance tonight probably wouldn't have gotten it done, but maybe makes it a little bit more competitive. Uh, that would be the only thing I would say. Um, I, I will say this kind of last point. Uh, I think this will be an interesting team next year because they're going to have a lot of people go off to the NFL. Uh, I think it'll be a very young team next year. So it will be interesting to see, you know, as this team becomes more and more of Ryan Day's recruits going forward, uh, what they continue to look like. So, that's, that's going to be interesting to see, too. Yeah, no question about that. No question about that. Um, yeah, I appreciate the call. Um, again, sure, we'll Mark. continue on from here with with more thoughts on it. Thanks, David. No, that was, that was, yep. that was basically it. Thanks, Mark. Bye-bye. I'll have to admit I had a couple of responses to what Dave had to say, and they were just lost at one point. I was just uh, – looking at TV and looking at comments and thought, oh, David said a few things that I was going to respond to, but they're gone now. They are gone. So, of course, Trey Sermon got hurt the first play of the game. Um, so it's funny when people mention excuses. So no team should lay out um, or fan base should lay out uh, players being injured as an excuse because you, you play the game with whomever you have available. Should we talk about it? Yeah, this is called a college football discussion channel. <laughs> this is a discussion channel for college football. So for us to not talk about injuries and players that are missing is idiotic. <laughs> that would be completely moronic. Uh, Devontae Smith missed much of the second half. Would he have caught more passes, gained more yards, and put together an even greater, more prolific day? Yes, he would have. <laughs> so we'll mention that as well. So Trey Sermon left the game in the first uh, first series. One carry out. So again, we can only speculate on the impact of that injury and missing a player that was so dynamic and has been on an incredible run in Ezekiel Elliott. I'm not comparing Trey Sermon to Ezekiel Elliott, but statistically going on a Zeke Elliott kind of run the last three games against Michigan State, Northwestern, and against Clemson. So he gets lost. Master T comes in. He plays relatively well. Scores the first two touchdowns of the game uh, for the Buckeyes. But he's not. Uh, he's more of a straight line runner than Trey Sermon is. Less wiggle there. Less. Um, Trey Sermon's not a scat back elusive guy, but uh, there's a little bit more going there in the open field for Trey Sermon than Master T. Justin Fields, I thought, was uh, – and I'm just going through. I'm not doing an Ohio State slant. I just jotted down players' names. I will certainly get to the Bama side, and it's got to start with Devontae Smith, who put on an all-time, all-time, all-time great uh, performance for the Crimson Tide as the MVP of this game. And I believe Christian Barmore was on the defensive side. I've got some thoughts about him as well. 